if you can, Coach, tell us about Anthony Volpe. You know, the player first. We'll talk about him off the field, but just tell us about the player first from your vantage point. Well, Anthony, uh, the first time I saw him, he, he came to our summer camp. He must have been 13 years old, and um, he was he was undersized. Um, I was a little skeptical, um, to be honest, of, of all the hype that surrounded him. I mean, this is a boy that's been in Team USA's program for um, at least you know five, six years, and um, you know it, it's it's hard to project how a kid's going to turn out when he's 18 years old. But uh, at our camp, I saw him hitting our batting cage, and I saw him take ground balls. And from the first moment I saw him pick up a ground ball, I knew that he could defend uh, at, at a high level. Um, offensively, the swing was there. Um, he, he needed some, some strength and size. Um, but, you know, as a coach, uh, the thing that I appreciate and I've learned to appreciate is how a, a boy can change uh, from year to year. And every year, freshman to sophomore year, he made a significant jump sophomore to junior year. And then the jump he made junior to senior year was off the charts in terms of his physicality. Um, you know, so now he stands about 5'11", 180 pounds. He's, he's strong as an ox. Uh, he, he can really run. Uh, he, like I said, he really defends. Um, and offensively, uh, he, he's, he's, I would say, a uh, contact hitter. But now he's got that power to go along with it. Um, his hands are always inside the baseball. Uh, he has the ability um, to hit the ball to all fields. Um, but the biggest thing that separates Anthony is his IQ. His baseball IQ is through the roof. His instincts are, are, are off the charts. Um, in 2017, um, I remember in the North Final uh, against Pope John, um, he should have been covering second base on a double steal. Well, our, our catcher um, threw a ball over our third baseman, third baseman's head, which uh, would have been the uh, tying run, and Anthony was backing up third base in full extension, caught the ball on the outfield grass and jumped to his feet to prevent that run from scoring. You know, it was almost like the play where, you know, Jeter is – against Oakland in the playoffs, you know, running in front of the the catcher, uh, cuts the ball and, and flips the ball to Posada. I mean, it was it, that's just the same play, um, but on a different part of the field. He shouldn't have been there, but his instincts took over and knew that he had to be. Uh, that's a great analogy, Coach. And, and as we've come to learn, uh, he idolized Derek Jeter growing up, and he speaks about his parents allowing him not to go to school that day when the Yankees won in 2009 and he goes to the parade and he's looking at all of these players on the floats going by and especially Jeter and it's just lodged in life and, and, and I guess we should explain that for his parents to let him not go to school is a big deal because both of his parents uh, are doctors and they, they take uh, education um, of paramount importance. You know, Coach, you mentioned something to me uh, the other day when I was speaking to you, preparing for this, and I just loved it. When Anthony came back from Panama, when he comes back with the gold medal yeah. for Team USA, you're, you're, you're not only his coach, but you're also his math teacher and his accounting teacher. So he walks into the class and you said, good job, but you missed a lot of work. Let's get right <laughs> down to it. So <laughs> I, I just loved that. And just tell us about Anthony, the student, for a moment, if you will. Well, the young man um, is probably one of the best students that I've had in the classroom. I don't know if he's ever received a B at Del Barton. We're, we're talking about an elite student. Um, everything he does, um, he does with a purpose, and his work ethic is second to none. So when Jack and Anthony had to... Um, missed some time from school in the fall to participate uh, with team, team USA. They, they they missed a, a fair amount of school, but um, both of, both of them uh, who had the opportunity to go to Vanderbilt um, and, and that's where Jack's heading um, demonstrated um, through their Del Barton career that um, they're they're terrific baseball players, but they are 
unbelievable students. And, uh, you know, it's just a sign of maturity, uh, a sign that he's got everything, uh, everything together. And, um, you know, that day he walked into my classroom, um, you know, it, it was, you know, all his peers were over the moon about the gold medal and, you know, his performance in that, in that tournament was, was crazy, crazy good. And, um, you know, everyone was congratulating him. And, you know, I walked over to him and I said, um, you know, I'm glad you're back. Um, congratulations. Um, but who did you guys play the 12 U team over there? I think the final (laughs) score was like 19, nothing. And, and it just, it was a tribute to, uh, what a team they, they, they assembled for team USA. I think every boy on that, that roster w- was taken in the MLB draft uh, a couple weeks ago. So what, what a great experience for those guys. Uh, amazing coach. You were good enough to provide to us a quick video. It's very brief, but it's very telling. Uh, you were um, at the Volpe's house. They had, a, um, uh, they had everybody over for, uh, it was uh, June 3rd, and it was the draft night, and it was broadcast on MLB Network. Without further ado, we're going to go over to a quick video that that you shot, and then we're going to we're going to come back. With the 30th selection of the 2019 MLB Draft, the New York Yankees select Anthony. Yeah! <laughs> Coach, I love it. It's brief. Quite frankly, not a really a word was really spoken, but it speaks volumes. What, what jumps out to me was how composed he was. And for anyone at any age to be in that spot, to have composure, but a teenager, no less. And you know what the other thing that jumped out at me, Coach, was the, the, the humbleness And it was almost like he was deflecting the attention. And the thing that really gives you goosebumps is his teammates were happier for him than than he was. So this is quite a special young man that everybody loves. Yeah, I I think everybody, it's safe to say, everybody roots for him. You know, obviously his teammates, his coaches, you know, his family. But even even his opponents, the way he plays the game and handles himself, um, I, I think... You know, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who who roots against him. He, you know, I, I can't see the video, um, you know, because I'm on the phone with you. But I got goosebumps just listening, mm-hmm. and it, it brings me back to that moment. And I remember how composed he was, and you know, just just humble, and that that's who he is. And uh, as you can see, you know, his, his teammates were genuinely, you know, over the moon for him at that moment as as was all of us. So, you know, that, that's what makes him special. You know, he's a, he's a terrific baseball player. He's a terrific student, but he's a better hu- human being. You know, he's just, he's, he's one of a kind. Amazing. Coach, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our next graphic and we're going to continue the timeline. So ladies and gentlemen mm-hmm. that are watching uh, this uh, story unfold, June 3rd, we just experienced it with you. June 6th, only a few days later, you're playing for the New Jersey State Championship. You were able to win four to three. The interesting thing, Coach, is that you tied something into Jeter. Um, I'm going to tie something in also. The game starts off, first batter gets hit by a pitch, next batter, Volpe. As you said, he likes to stay inside the baseball. He turned and crushed and hit a towering home run. He pulled it to left field and set the tone for that game. Correct, Coach? That is correct. Here we go with everybody piling on, and he's, you know, he's right on top. The celebration begins. It's like a storybook, so if you really want to continue, 
coach to circle back to you know Derek Jeter you know the um, the parallels are there we'll go over to our next graphic which you provided to me it's you and Anthony hugging each other after that game it's it had to be not only uh, celebratory but a, a sense of relief coach because my goodness you had Al Leiter's kid on your team. You have Volpe on your team. It's not easy to win the championship game that you're supposed to win, correct? Well, you know, a, a year ago we were on the wrong side of that game. We lost one nothing in a in a heartbreaker, and I, I think our guys you know, use that that loss as as motivation, and they you know worked as hard as they possibly could to get back to that game. And, you know, to get back to that game, you got to go through the likes of Don Bosco, Seton Hall Prep, Bergen Catholic, St. Joe's, Pope John. So there's no guarantees. And once we made it back there, you know, we saw our, the same opponent in St. Augustine Prep, you know, who is a terrific program, uh, a team that we've played the last three years in the state final. And we saw a, a drafted kid on the mound. And, you know, you know Anthony got a a pitch on the inner half and, you know, um, put a good swing on it and, and gave us a huge lift in that game. Coach, I asked you to do me uh, one favor, if you could, to ask Anthony one question that I had a hunch about. We talk so much about Jeter, and when I looked at Anthony Volpe and I, I looked at his, his belt, I looked at his frame, and I looked at his demeanor, there was a current player that jumped out at me that I thought that maybe he emulated, and you were good enough uh, to ask um, him. So could you tell us of the current players? We know Jeet, he idolizes, but of the current players, um, who does he emulate? Alex Bregman. Yep. So, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of comparisons, um, but, you know, for Anthony to, 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 to say that, you know, Bregman's the guy he emulates, um, you know, I think you were spot on, Mike, when when you made that call. And you know, I I, I don't see Bregman play enough, but I, I know of his his track record and, and his success and you know his makeup and his uh, his career. Um, I think that's a fair comparison, and I think that's somebody uh, that that's pretty good to emulate. Um, just to get inside your mind, just for one second. Bregman went to LSU. He went to LSU for three years. The thing that struck me, Coach, was the, the intensity, the look in his eyes, but also that team-oriented way. There's just the intangible jumps out at me, and it's very Jeter-like, but this is from, the, from the, the, the current thing. Was, Coach, again, we were talking about walking a fine line. Was there any moment that you, in a private moment with Anthony, gave your opinion mm -hmm. as to whether he should maybe sign with the Yankees or maybe, you know, go to college? And we, we know that he, uh, you know, had expressed interest in, in going to Vanderbilt along with uh, Jack. Well, you know, I think both boys were in a win-win a, a situation. Uh, I mean, to, to go to Vanderbilt University um, and, and play – play there for, for Coach Corbin is an unbelievable experience and to get to compete for a, a College World Series. Um, you know, the, the fallback is, you know, you get taken high in the draft and, and you sign for a, uh, a crazy amount of money. I mean, you're, you're in a win-win. You're in the driver's seat. But I think it's a, it's a personal, it's a family decision. Um, Anthony and I, uh, you know, have talked about a hundred million things under the sun, um, but the, the the draft and going to school that was kind of something that, you know, when he asked me, I, I would uh, be very vanilla with my answers and and I would let him know, you know, the pros and cons. But I wanted Anthony and, and his family to make that decision. I didn't want to influence my opinion uh, on him. I think um, ultimately uh, he he made a great decision being uh, taken in the first round and, and drafted by the team that, you know, he's always dreamed about playing for. I mean, it's a fairy tale. So for Anthony, um, it, it, it was a great choice. Coach, we're going to, well said, and we wouldn't expect anything else from you, but that, that was fantastic what you just said, and you handled it perfectly. Uh, we're going to go 
We're going to go ahead in our timeline just a few days after that, June 10th. Um, you were there, Coach, Yankee Stadium. And mm -hmm. um, Anthony does sign with the Yankees. Mm -hmm. uh, it was signing bonus, $2.7 million. So I guess a, a green wave of a, of a different nature. <laughs> but uh, yeah. um, the thing is that we have a graphic, and, and again, you were there. Uh, we, have, we have Brian Cashman, we have Anthony, and Damon Oppenheimer. Tell us about uh, that day. Well, th that was a, a real honor for, for me to be invited to, 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 to share in that moment. And, you know, I've been to Yankee Stadium a, a bunch of times, but I've never had the, the pleasure of, um, you know, being in the, you know, what they call the war room and where they make all their big decisions. And, you know, to, to witness um, that moment, for that boy and that family is something that I'll, I'll never, never forget. Um, obviously, we all hear about what a first-class organization the Yankees are, but I, I got to live that um, up close and personal for a few hours. And the way they uh, um, tr treated Anthony and, and um, I guess the, the, the whole um, experience was, was off the charts, something that you could never envisioned and um to meet those gentlemen um you know brian cashman and and op and uh have conversations with them that was a that was a real smile for me 